Hello everybody and welcome to my 14th Microsoft Access tutorial and this tutorial is going to show you how you can use the totals uh, section of your query uh, design uh, in order to kind of add up then do calculations on your fields. So I'm going to create a new query so you go into query design view uh, and I'm going to add in my users and my sales table. Um, and oh, I've added another one in it, but in by accident again. Uh, so I'm just going to use these two tables for now. Um, don't think I'm going to need the items one. Uh, and so I'm then going to put in my username. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click in here. I'm going to press on totals. And it's just going to show up this extra total column. Uh, alternatively, if you click on the design up here, you can also press it up there. Um, but uh, so now I've got my totals one I'm going to leave this one as group by and that just means give me a list of the qu uh, query names uh, the users so there we go list of the users um, as soon as we add in the sales information it's going to give me a list of the users but it's going to give me multiples for each sale um, but I'm not going to put in those ones. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the uh, we want the quantity of what they've done. So I'm going to put the quantity down in here, and then I'm going to change the group by to sum. And what this is going to do is is going to instead of returning multiples of my sales, it's actually going to add up the quantity. It's going to sum the quantity of how many there are. Uh, or how many things have been sold. So if we go into our data sheet view, you'll see it's going to give me a number here instead, and it's going to call it sum of quantity. So that's saying I've brought a total of six items, Bruce brought six, uh, Andy's brought two, and Miley's brought four. Um, I'm then going to put in my sale ID, and I'm going to change this to count. Uh, and what this is going to do is going to count the number of transactions uh, rather than add them all up. So I can do this on a text field. So if I run this now, so this is showing me that for, so for me, Matt Sands, I've had four transactions and then the quantity of those transactions is six. Uh, so I've made four different purchases, uh, uh, adding up to six different items. Um, and you could do the same with currency. So let's say we want to add in our items table. Close. And we want to put in the total of our item cost. Uh, or let's say the average of our item cost. So let's just let's just use the average one. So our average cost of each item, what that's going to be. I'm also going to put in the minimum, which is this drop down. And then I'm going to put it in again. And I'm going to put in the maximum. And then let's just run this. So let's go to our data sheet view. You'll see we've got so we've got the average item cost. We've then got the lowest item cost out of our range and the highest. If they're all the same, then the minimum and maximum are obviously going to be the same. But let's say for me, I've had four transactions totaling six items with an average cost of £3.25, the lowest price being £1, the maximum price being £4. Um, and this is where the uh, all of this comes in. Now, sometimes, so let's say we just want to say, cut off all of these. Uh, and we want to change our quantity, but we only want to see it on a particular date. Um, but we don't want the date to be showing through on here because when we go into our data sheet view, it's going to give us multiple entries for each person. So I just want it to filter by that date. So let's go and change this drop down to where. And then at the moment, this wouldn't run because, well, it will run, but it's not going to change any criteria for us. Uh, so what we need to do is we just need to put in our date. So let's put in. Uh, equal to t t uh, today and it'll put the hashtags in for us automatically uh, be careful when you're putting in criteria like I just did then without putting the hashtags in most of the time it will fill the hashtags in for you but sometimes it won't so 
this is going to show each user how many I uh, items they've bought, bought, where it's today. So let's go into our data sheet view and it's going to say, I've bought one item today. Uh, and that is essentially how you use the totals column. It's quite simple. Um, you've got to be careful of, um, of using them uh, sometimes when you've got quite a lot of them and you've got the group buys. You, it's normally best to put your group buys first and just so you can see it clearly and then put your sums and things in. But you don't have to. Um, but yeah, if you forget to put one of these like that and then all of a sudden you've got uh, you've got kind of well it doesn't show on there because I've got the criteria in but you've, if I did it like that then you'd see I'd start to get lots of different entries and you might get a bit confused about why it's doing that um, so just remember to always check all of them um, well that's going to be it for totals and uh, the next tutorial uh, I'm going to show you how you can use uh, parameters so thanks for listening and I hope to catch you in the next tutorial